Hello everyone, welcome back. Last video we have created a transactional app. We have performed create, update, delete operations without writing a single piece of code. Now in this video, I will add an action to the same application to set the sales order status to complete it. Let's begin. So far we have discussed about behavior definition and data modeling and we haven't seen about what is a behavior implementation. So behavior implementation is a place where we actually write a piece of code which will actually execute when you perform a specific action on the application. Our requirement is to add a button called complete. So user will select a sales order and will click on complete button and will set the status to complete. For that. Let me go back to the base table. For our demo purpose, I have added one more column called status to show the status of the uh, sales order. And for the same status, I have added a UI annotation as well by specifying the position label and the importance. Well, let me execute the app to see what is the current state of the application. I have come to the service binding and I select my entity and click on preview. Since I have added the new column status, now it is showing up here and I can see the current value of the status is blank for most of the sales orders. The value that you see here completed, which I have already performed uh, an action on this and reverted the changes so that I can show the same example for you guys. Our goal is to add a button here next left to the delete button called complete. When user selects the sales order and click on complete button, the status should be changed to completed like this. For that, we have added the column in the base table for status and also we have added UI annotation in the CDS view as well. To implement that action, we have to implement the behavior definition. In the previous example, we have just defined the behavior definition. We haven't implemented anything because the ABAP runtime environment will take care of create delete and update operations so that's the reason we didn't write any code but action or application specific business logic so we have to write our own logic by implementing the behavior definition let me switch back to the behavior definition and this is our behavior definition our behavior definition implementation consists of mainly two parts the first thing is behavior pools the second one is helper classes what is a behavior pool? The transaction behavior of a business object is implemented in one or more global ABAP classes. These classes are dedicated only to implement the business object's behavior and also called as behavior pools. Don't get confused by the definition and I'm going to show an example in a minute which will clarify all of your doubts. So basically what they are saying is a behavior pool actually will take care of implementation of the behavior definition that we have created. The implementation will actually happen in a global class. The class they are calling it as a behavior pool. To implement the behavior of my CDS entity, I have to define a class. Here we are specifying implementation managed in class GCL my sales. And we are also specifying a keyword called unique. What does it mean? For this CDS entity, there can be only one class which will be responsible for implementing the behavior suppose if i try to create a one more class pointing to the same cds entity which i have defined here it will throw me an error i go back to the previous code at the initial level, we just mentioned implementation managed because we are dealing with create update delete operations we did not write any single piece of code and also we did not specify any special classes here we just mentioned implementation is a managed one we have already discussed about what is a managed or unmanaged if you haven't gone through my previous video please go check it is important to get an understanding of all these keywords so that you'll be comfortable in uh, writing or creating the behavior definitions in order to add an action to this uh, behavior definition uh, we have to specify class name here saying implementation managed in class zcl my sales and unique as we discussed, we cannot have more than one class implementing the same CDS entity. Hope this first line is clear. The next thing is action. 
In order to specify the action, first we need to start with the keyword action and the action name. And the result is nothing but a return. I will explain in a few seconds. And the cardinality and dollar self. So first, I'll uh, talk about these three. Usually an action will have an input and output parameters. In our case, user will select the sales order and click on the complete button and that row that action has to receive. What is the type of that uh, receiving parameter here? Like, I mean the input parameter. The type of the input parameter is nothing but our CDS entity, right? Because that is a view that we are displaying on the UI. And also the output will be the same because we are sending the same row to the UI so that the whatever the status that we have set will be visible on the UI. Here the input and the output parameters are of the same type. So that's the reason we have to specify dollar self. And coming to the cardinality, here we can specify the multiplicity of the output parameter depends on the input instance. So in this case, let me make it one based on the input parameter i mean based on the input instance that i am receiving we are sending single instance back as an output parameter so that's the reason we have defined the cardinality if i have to read this in a casual language i can say my action set complete method will receive the same type of parameter as input and output which indicates as a dollar self and I will send the only single record from this action. So that's the reason I specified the cardinality. If I specify 0 to 1 or 1, that means I'm returning only one row or one instance technically. And if I specify 0 to star, based on the input instance, I'm sending multiple instances as an output. So what if the input parameter and the output parameter are not of the same type as our CDS view. In that case, we can specify parameter and entity name, which is an abstract entity. So when I specify parameter and this is an abstract entity, this actually means I am receiving an input parameter, which is of type GCDS ABS, which is a, an abstract CDS view. Sorry, an abstract CDS entity is nothing but a global structure that we have in SC11, which is similar to the structure type it's just a structure which is available at globally so for just for our example i have shown this so no need to worry about uh, what is a stacked entity and all it's just a simple structure globally available in our case if you have to specify a different input parameter this is how you can specify this action we are receiving the same entity type as a parameter so i have just specified as a self because I am sending the same uh, entity type as a output parameter here. Now this is the time to implement this action. As we defined at the uh, initial line here, we are telling this is the class I am going to implement the behavior for this action. So how do we create a behavior implementation? All you have to do is right click on the behavior definition and click on new behavior implementation. Here, whatever the class that you have specified, ZCL my sales, you can give the same. And when you select and click on finish, I have already created. Let me show. This is how the behavior pool looks. Let me go to the global class. I will explain this later. And this is how a global uh, class looks. And this is uh, called the behavior pool as we discussed earlier in this video a behavior pool is nothing but a class which will take care of implementing the uh, application specific actions so this class is similar to our standard uh, bab class if you can see abstract final till here so we have the same syntax to create a class if you want to create as abstract final the additional thing is here is for behavior of so we are telling for this behavior definition, we are actually creating this global class for implementation. The thing about this class is it is empty. It is always empty and we need, do not write any logic inside this class. This is just a container. So where do we define the implementation? If you look at this section, we have class relevant local types and local types. Uh, click on local types. And if I go back to the presentation again, initially I spoke about behavior pools. 
here we have one more concept called helper classes this helper class actually contains the actual logic of our actions so in local type section we'll create a class called local helper class I start with the naming standard LHC and you can give anything our local helper class or this is also called as auxiliary class inherit a class called CL above behavior handler and which contains a method which is for our action which we define in the behavior implementation and this is the output parameter we are importing a table here which is keys I we can name it as anything I can say sales data and I can say which is written data okay you can mention whatever the names that we want we are importing the IT sales data which is of type that we have mentioned here in the behavior definition which is of type G sales master so when you look at this method so the we have defined a method name for our action since we are modifying the entity we are specifying that for modify this is a part of the syntax and we are importing the table which is ITSL data of type CDS entity that we defined in the behavior definition and also we are mentioning for which action we are actually implementing this take action method and result is a written parameter which has the same type as a CDS entity and I have named it as IT written once you define this method inside this method we need to implement the actual logic let me rename as before now coming to the implementation part take action is a method which is responsible for executing this set complete action here our goal is to modify the status of the sales order the column name is status this is the way we need to write the logic to update the entity set so we are telling modify entity which is the root view where we have defined when we are creating the cds view so this is our root view the same name i have given here gc sales order master update from value when you look at the syntax and let me open the documentation all you have to do is just simply press f1 on the keyboard it will open the documentation just double click on the tab this is how the syntax look here modify entity entity name we have specified the operation that we are interested in is update from so update from it instance view which is an importing parameter for this modify entity our main aim is to prepare this internal table it instance view in our case uh, which is this i'm actually preparing an internal table which needs to be updated and rest of the option these are not relevant for example okay this is actually called eml entity manipulation language just like our data definition language behavior definition language eml is also a new concept in abap restful programming model update from an internal table this is the internal table that we are passing to this modify entity statement in the importing parameter i am telling for the sales order this will actually come from the user selected order so key sales order and i'm telling i've set the status to completed and along with the field that needs to be updated here i'm specifying the status we have to also specify the information to the substructure called percentage control this percentage control actually holds the flags for all the fields which are available in the entity in order to make sure the update happened to this particular status we need to set the flags to on so this is actually a constant which is defined in the interface if above behavior there is a constant called mk on if i click on f3 it will take me to that interface to this particular flag which is 0 1 so when you set the status to on the update will happen to the DB level if there are any errors the data will be populated in this internal tables and the same data uh, same messages will be shown on the UI if there are any errors these syntaxes may look little strange at the initial 
but uh, on, as soon as you start practicing and debugging you will come to know what is happening here and now let me go back to our application and see how it actually looks i will navigate to the service binding and i will select my root node and click on preview so this is how our app looks still we are not able to see the action button here there is one more step that we need to do at the studious view level this is one of the important step to keep in mind when you want to add an action in order to display the action button additional information you need to add at the annotation level which this can be added at any field level it doesn't matter where you specify this information so what exactly we are doing we are telling this this is the action type and the data action here we are specifying the value of the action name that we have defined behavior definition this is the action name that we are giving and also we are giving a label to that button called complete now let me activate this and refresh my application and we'll see if the button will appear here or not let me refresh i can see the button here right now this is disabled so when i click on go i will get all the sales order as soon as you select the sales order the button will be enabled now when i click a sales order which does not have any status and click on complete and i can see the status is updated to complete i will select this one as well and the status is set to completed this is how we can implement an action with a behavior implementation from a behavior definition in order to get more clarity let me keep a breakpoint in my method and this will also showcase how we can debug this application as well all you have to do is double click on the highlighted column here which is this blue spot and this will set a breakpoint now here i'll select the sales order number 12 when i click on complete and i can see a pop up showing that this is kind this kind of a launch is config to open debug perspective when it is suspends so actually it is saying is you are going to switch to a debug perspective right now we are in above perspective so in order to debug we have to be in a debug perspective so let's switch to debug perspective now let's check the importing parameter so as i mentioned earlier so method take action has an importing parameter which is keys we can name it as anything and when you mouse over that you can see a record which is having the information about the sales order so that is the sales order that i have taken and while updating the entity and mentioning for this sales order please set the status to completed and make sure it will get updated so that I, that's the reason i am specifying the flag here so how do you see the variable data uh, you can mouse over it to see um, the data about uh, the specific parameter or a variable also you can click on this icon called variables you can see all the local variables which are available when you expand this when i come back to my app i can see the status is updated there are other concept called uh, such as validations modifications since you got familiar with action you can also try with validations and determination on your own to get more exposure to the concepts and for now i'll sign off thank you so much for watching